I received a cease and desist letter from uh, Les Industries Glaçons, uh, Oasis Juice. It was like a threatening letter. It was kind of like either stop or else. At this point, I'm divorced. I've moved out of my family home. I owe everybody and their brother money somewhere. My daughter just got out of the hospital. She was in the ICU. What am I going to do? The very beginning, I just brought in uh, a palette of bars, I think, and a palette of hand wash with no labels. I put together a program. I did it all from home. So I really liked the idea of coming up with the name, the label, the logo, the packaging, and uh, using a lot of the experience I had in advertising, I put together, you know, some sell sheets, some promotional items, some displays, and I just basically went and knocked on the pharmacy doors. They kept selling out and ordering more and ordering more. I approached a distributor. With that, I could bring in some packaged products, not uh, unpackaged and doing it from home. I received a cease and desist letter from uh, Les Industries Lasson, uh, Oasis Juice. And my reaction to that, honestly, was like, really? Like, are you kidding me? Like, it was just, there, I wasn't nervous or afraid or I was like, this is completely ridiculous. I felt it was a scare tactic. We were at a, a charity fundraiser for a hospital foundation and uh, we were golfing together and she just uh, happened to uh, tell me about her her incredible experience, a case that seemed uh, preposterous against her. Cease and desist order is obtained by a company through its own corporate lawyers on retainer, on, on hire, to protect the, the exclusivity of the brand and the trademark. Uh, uh, and that in turn is to protect the, uh, the competitive advantage of the firm. People sometimes refer to such practices as trademark bullying or copyright bullying um, because there are going to be some individuals or small businesses that simply don't have the resources um, to fight. The cease and desist is to protect their intellectual property, to protect their identity, literally, uh, and thus their competitive advantage. Well, basically, they were saying, your brand is ours. Uh, you, you shouldn't have used it, and you can't use it anymore. And whatever profit you uh, derived from using our brand, you have to pay back. Like, really, like a $650 million company wants the profits from, well, I don't want to say a few bars of soap, but I mean, you know, the profits were negligible. And uh, you also have to show us every little piece of, uh, of cardboard or paper that uh, um, has our brand on it, and we have to supervise the destruction of it. And so all of your current products uh, are ours as well, as your profits and your, uh, and your material. Uh, La Sonde uh, were uh, arguing that Olivia's Oasis's brand uh, was actually a risk for them that consumers might confuse a Olivia's Oasis's soap brand with uh, La Sonde's Oasis's juice brand. You don't want different companies out there with the same name because it will cause confusion in the marketplace. Consumers are very busy, they've got lives to lead, and they face thousands and thousands of brands on television or in the stores every time they go into the store. And we just don't have the, we, us, don't have the time to start spending research time into saying, well, is this company called Oasis, this brand by Oasis produced by that company over there called Oasis? Every day, I felt more and more confident. I mean, the trial started and I felt confident. And then as the week 
progressed, that confidence just kept building. And that was actually a turning point where Deborah Kutzman decided to, uh, that we would argue abuse of process against, uh, against L'Assemblée. And uh, the decision was very, very harsh towards L'Assemblée. Uh, the decision for the trademark, she made it clear and she, she actually said, we would have to believe a consumer to be devoid of all intelligence to confuse the Oasis Juice and our brand. We're not in the same industry, it's not even the same name. After Ms. Kuzman had won uh, her uh, Superior, Court, Superior Court case that uh, granted her two aspects, she had won her brand back and she had been vindicated, if I can use this word, as having been brought into a process she should not have been brought in. And so her fees uh, incurred were being reimbursed and Lasson was being punished for uh, so acting, which was actually one of the goals of Mrs. Kudzman, of having, uh, if, if she could help it, uh, this kind of thing not happen again. And so obviously I was ecstatic when we received the decision. I was very, very, very excited. Norma kind of brought me down a little bit. He said, look, he said, I think they won't appeal the trademark. He said, they're allowed to appeal all of it. So wait, he said, before you get too excited, wait and see what happens. There are two, there are two components to a decision. The first is the decision on trademark infringement and whether, in fact, there was co confusion in the use of the Olivia's Oasis mark. Uh, and the second part has to do with the award of damages that she made against uh, La Sonde uh, for having brought this legal action. Um, now, the first part, it seems very reasonable on the, on the facts that were before the court to find that there was no likelihood of confusion. It's that second part that's more controversial, and that second part is really about whether um, uh, Lassonde was just taking care of business and doing what a responsible trademark owner would do to protect their trademark, or whether they went beyond what was reasonable um, and, and, and acted in a way that justified this award of uh, damages or award of compensation against them. So uh, the reason why the appeal uh, was uh, filed was on a second aspect. So Lasson did not appeal having lost the case in law, but they appealed having uh, 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 acted uh, wrongly and abusively. Their lawyer had an hour to plead why they did not think it was an abusive case. My lawyer had an hour to do the same. I felt the way they were talking and what they were saying, I felt we had already lost. It was clear to me, actually, that we had lost. Um, I really, Norma felt the same way. I felt, felt that they had already made their decision. But they basically were saying this was this was a legitimate action on the part of this company and that there was no evidence that, that this was being done with a view to um, simply to putting the other company out of business or, or, or shutting them down. I get the decision that we, we lost. So yes, I won the trademark. I own the trademark, but I have absolutely no money left to operate anymore to continue my business because I'm in so much debt. Uh, I, I owe everybody and their brother money somewhere. So now at this point, it's like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. I, I, I've lost, I have no money. Uh, they're not going to be paying me all this money that I've dished out, that I'm in debt over my head. Uh, but I had no more energy left. So I called Christiane Desjardins from La Presse. And I found the story interesting because she was a strong woman. She made the battle for seven years. It's a lot of trouble, it's a lot of money, and uh, now she continued to win, but she lost the money, so she had to pay for a victory. The article was a little drop, and it became a, a tidal wave because of the social media. Social media moves physically at the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. That's how fast it went. So on the Saturday, there was a, a, an article in the paper, and on the Sunday, uh, there was uh, thousands of uh, comments that were made that were virulent against Lasson. And then it just 
within hours, then it became again life-changing in a whole other direction. Basically what happened is Guy Lepage, a very well-known personality who had lots of people listening to what he had to say, he uh, had tweeted that morning, I'm not drinking any more Oasis juice. So I think the man had like something like over 200,000 followers on Twitter. So that's why it became such a viral story. He saw the story online, he tweeted that, and then things just went crazy. And they rallied uh, brilliantly. I mean, they squashed <laughs> the other company. They really, really put a, did a kibosh on them. And it shows the power of social media when it, when it gets rolling against you and that wave starts rolling out there, the best thing you can do is run to the front of the line and say, we're so sorry, we've made such a terrible mistake. We're going to compensate this person because there's, and we will make sure it will never happen again. I mean, that's all you can do. So I just sat there like till two in the morning, following this, like a lot of other people, following the tweets, following what people were writing. Then I find out that by like five or six supper time, there's over three or 4,000 people that have gone on the, the Oasis Juice, the Lasson Facebook, complaining and saying they're going to boycott, and it just becomes this huge, huge thing. I was beginning to, to freaking out a little bit because I said to myself, wow, did I made a monster and he's out of the house now, <laughs> running everywhere? But you know, my story, it, it was a story, a, a usual story like we do every day. I finally got uh, to speak to Mr. Lassonde, he actually called me. He asked me what I wanted. I told him, it was very simple, I wanted what the court had awarded me. No more, no less, that's what I wanted. And I wanted there to be zero conditions. And at that point, you don't care about the money at that point. You're caring about the hit to your own brand and the damage to your reputation and potentially to your competitive advantage. The idea of their, of their message was, we are sorry. Uh, we, we, we did not uh, uh, intend to do wrong. Uh, and uh, we paid Mrs. Cousman back for her fees. This is certainly going to change the competitive landscape. It's going to change the way we do strategy. It's the way, change the way companies do their strategic decision making to try to achieve a competitive advantage. So that's why this case is so important. Basically, I fought for something for seven years that was settled within 30 hours because of the power of social media.